Today on Songs of Praise, the inspiring story of how one church became a beacon of hope to a village devastated by huge floods. It was a place of sanctuary and peace. And we see how the villagers were taken aback by a donation from a Muslim group from Yorkshire. And he looked at me and said, well, you would have done the same for us. I would wonder whether we would. I'll be finding out why one of Britain's favourite hymns has a special place in the hearts of fans of the FA Cup. And Dan will also reveal details of how you can apply to be part of a choir singing Abide With Me at the FA Cup final. And of course, there's some fantastic music from around the UK, including one of Scotland's premier singer-songwriters, Eddie Reader, who talks about her lifelong love of hymns. It just made me feel like there was something magical. But we start the programme with a song of celebration. A year ago, Britain was in the grip of some of the worst winter floods for nearly a century. This road leading into the Somerset village of Mutchelney was swamped with water up to four feet deep, meaning many of the residents had to be ferried in and out by boat. Ironic then that during Saxon times, the village name meant Big Island, which is exactly what it became. Two of its hardest hit residents were retired doctors Elizabeth and Peter Nightingale, whose home had already been ravaged by flood water just 12 months earlier. But this time, the water rose even higher. Gosh, Elizabeth, this is something you don't see every day. A no. canoe in your hallway. Yes, well, that was Sandy. This is your son? Yes. And he came home in the canoe and canoed into the house. Gosh. Good morning, Mother, he said. <laughs> you can smile now, but it was... A dreadful scene. Couldn't believe it, because we'd only had the house back together for six weeks. Our beautiful house ruined again. As villagers struggled to cope, many turned to Mutchelney's church, which became an emergency relief centre. And 12 months on, residents are remembering the crucial role the church played as the village was cut off for an incredible 10 weeks. And I don't live in the village. I had to come in by boat to see them. And it was just so good to see everyone pulling together. It was wonderful the way 
the church was being used as a distribution point for post, for papers, for food, a doctor's surgery. It was just good to see the church being used as the hub of the community. Butternut squash, pea and ham, lovely parsley. Oh, <laughs> pea and ham, please. Just as they did during the floods, the church continues to feed and unite the community. And today, I'm lending a helping hand too. One ladle or two. Uh, no, Is that Thank enough, Fisher? I am. And help yourself some <laughs> bread. <laughs> and some. I think everybody in the village came into the church, be it to collect posts, to look at the food, to choose something, um, or even for the services were packed full of people. We had in one of our services uh, an island drawn on a big board and people were asked to write the good things that were happening. And we covered that island with post-it notes. Actually, saying things that were good, things like meeting neighbours. In addition, we had a tray with a cardboard cutout representing each house in the village. Those stayed here before the altar the whole time during the floods um, with a candle burning. Many across Britain were so moved by the pictures on daily news bulletins that they pledged cash to the relief effort. Later, we'll find out about a generous donation from a Muslim group, which really touched the hearts of the villagers. It was a life-changing event, I think, for most of us. And it's something we'll, we'll always think about. Throughout the whole period, there was one hymn which kept the residents going. Thankfully, the church here in Muchelney was not directly affected by the floods, so everything's intact, including its organ. This instrument is at the heart of pretty much every church service up and down the country, but for one man, it's become a key part of a unique musical mission. At this church in Cardiff, the regular organist is John Richards, a man who's been playing the organ since he was a young lad. But now, in his 70s, he's attempting to complete an unusual challenge. I would love to be able to play every cathedral organ in the UK. With nearly a hundred in total, that will be no mean feat. And it's quite an ambition for a man who stopped playing altogether in 1992 after the sudden death of his first wife. I was attending a local church at the time and we used to play regularly on a Sunday morning. But after Barbara died, suddenly from a brain hemorrhage, uh, I couldn't find my way to the church anymore. I wasn't interested. And uh, therefore I stopped playing.
and then suddenly when I meet up with Lynn, you know, we talk, and obviously talk about your background, and Lynn found out that I was uh, an organ player. She then worked in her own way to get me back to it. John's second wife, Lynn, hoped his musicality would return if he had the chance to play some of our finest organs. So she secretly wrote letters to cathedrals asking permission for him to play the organ. I wanted to get the, the love of music that he had. I wanted to restore it and repair it. It worked. In 1996, John took on his first cathedral organ and soon he'd played 74 of a possible 94. The very first cathedral, which was Worcester. Look at you there. Mm. See, look at the happy, smiley face. I've still got so, a happy, smiley face now. <laughs> so that's the first one. <laughs> Westminster Cathedral. Do you remember? So I was playing this organ almost in the dark. And we were scared we were going to be locked in overnight. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Absolutely tremendous. Right, do you remember the cat, the cat in Truro? Yeah. And it used to sit on the yeah, altar. Yeah, it sat on the altar. It was yeah. great big, to, great big enormous remember, cat. Yeah. And people yeah. used to say, who's yeah. allowed a cat? And they used to say, well, it's yeah. one of God's creatures. Yeah. Why shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. That was fun. As well as taking photos, they also record every cathedral organ. See if you can identify which cathedral. So get ready and listen to this. Okay, here we go. 